Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Maddie if you're new here and I hope a lot of you are seeing this video for the first time because this is a good get to know you video. A good video to figure out why I love reading so much and why I can't stop talking about books. So stay tuned because this is the booktube newbie tag. The first question is why did you start this channel? This is gonna be a long-winded answer. <laughs> I grew up loving YouTube. I was always watching like the big influencers at the time. I, I remember watching Danielle Carolyn, uh, Sarah Bell. I think there was a girl named Meredith. Like I loved watching their videos and I always wanted to do YouTube myself, but I was way too scared. I was super shy up until honestly my senior year of high school, I really came out of my shell because I knew I was moving away and I wouldn't have to see the majority of these people again and I didn't care. I cared about people's opinions so much back then and honestly too much now. One year I had to have been in like seventh grade. I got a digital camera. It was a blue digital camera and I would sit at my vanity and I would pretend to film YouTube videos. I would actually film it on my digital camera and I would do my makeup and stuff like that with my Claire's makeup and I would just never post it. But I have been a YouTube watcher since seventh grade i don't know so that had to have been over 15 years ago and then fast forward to my senior year of college i had always thought about doing a youtube channel especially in college because i just wanted the memories honestly i'm a big picture person i love taking videos i was always on my snapchat i was always vlogging back then on my snapchat but before like vlogging was a thing and I would just post so much on my snapchat stories and everybody would swipe up and I feel like all my friends would get a kick out of it because I just love to document my life at college so senior year I had dragged my roommate and best friend into making a channel with me and we just ran with it <laughs> we didn't end up posting that many videos but we had so much fun filming them and editing them and getting the response from our friends but eventually that died down and we just didn't know what to post or we didn't know the direction of where we wanted this channel to go. But when I graduated and I had a big girl job where I was in the office and then COVID happened. So suddenly I was working from home, then I found myself getting a different job that was easier for me to film. And I started filming weekly or twice a week in 2020. And I just kept posting on the channel that my friend and I had started in college but I had changed it to just my name and I was having a lot of fun with it. I don't even know what I was posting. Vlogs, some sit down videos, some trends, some challenges, stuff like that. And then once I got a job in office again that kept me super busy, I stopped posting. I worked that job for almost two years and then we found out that my golden retriever who was almost three had stage four T-cell lymphoma, which is not what you want to hear when your dog is not even three years old. I was already planning to quit my job because I was miserable, but we were planning on staying in the area potentially. However, once we found out that Toby had cancer, we made it our mission to move into a house, even if it was a rental house, just so his last few months he could have a yard since he was an apartment dog. January 31st was the last day of my job. We ended up moving, I think maybe the fourth or fifth into our new house and I wasn't gonna look for a job yet because I wanted to spend as much time as possible with him since he had six to nine months to live. He ended up only living until the end of March so a lot shorter than we had hoped for but what can you do? I was spending all my time with him which was making it hard at the same time because I went from spending every single moment with him to him being gone. So when he passed away, I was like, I gotta do something. I don't have a job yet. I was gonna start looking though. And I would just sit home and be sad all day while Sam was at work. And I'm someone who feels everything deeply. Like if I'm happy, I'm the happiest person in the world. If I'm sad, I'm the saddest person in the world. I let every emotion consume me. So I had already been reading for all of these years since the pandemic, really, I got back into reading and I decided to start posting on YouTube again because it was a nice distraction. I started posting again in the end of March. I have been pretty consistent since then. And it also felt like everything clicked a few months into posting about books and my reading journey and stuff like that because I had never known what my niche was for this channel and I know you don't have to have a niche it does make things easier because people go on to YouTube and they search for certain things and so it finally made sense I was like I found what I want to talk about because I love reading and I love talking about my books 
and I don't have that many people in my life that I can talk about the books I like with, so I feel like this community was perfect for that. What is unique about this channel? I'm super passionate and I have been on YouTube for a few years now without success. So this is still really just a hobby for me and I will continue to keep posting about books even if nobody ever watches. So unfortunately you guys are stuck with me. I will never shut up. I spend a lot of time on my videos and I feel like I don't get to feel the reward of making those videos because I really don't get that many views. But nonetheless, it's still fun to me and I will continue to keep posting on YouTube and on TikTok while it's fun and while I am lucky enough to have more time to do so. In my mind, anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So that's why I invested in a nice camera a few years ago. It's why I spend time editing. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it right. And maybe one day I'll have a video that pops off. Whether or not that happens, I'm still gonna keep posting. Another thing that's unique about this channel is I love the library. I love using my resources. I have a Kindle. I don't always buy the physical book after, even though sometimes I want to. I am a huge library supporter. I love the Libby app. I'll listen to books on Spotify. I hope one day to have a huge home library. And I do have a pretty big one right now, but it's come from years of collecting these. Go sign up at your local library. This is your sign in the new year. Why do I love reading? Pure escapism. That is the main reason. When I was working a really stressful job back in 2020 to 2020, the beginning of 2023, um i was go 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 i didn't have time to think i was busy all day and so on the car ride home i would literally turn off the radio and i would sit there in silence and just try to shut my mind off but instead my mind would be racing and i would go home and i would talk about work and i would complain about work and i would have nightmares about work and then i would wake up and dread going to work and so i had to find a way where i would just shut off my brain and be still and be quiet. And I rediscovered reading. I think I brought a few books with me on my honeymoon in June of 2021. And that's what really jumpstarted me into reading again, because I flew through those books when I had the time. And I told myself I'm going to make time for reading because it definitely made a huge difference in my anxiety and my worries and my mental health. I don't like being alone with my thoughts and so <laughs> that's why I just pick up one book after another. Next question is what are your favorite books? Oh my gosh. Let's start with my favorite book when I was a teenager. The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Love that book and I still love that book in the movie. Then we have of course Akatar, which I read in 2022 and 2023. Love it. The second book is my favorite. I really loved One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Definitely my favorite TJR book. I loved Today, Tonight, and Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. It's a cute young adult book. All of these books I'm listing are five stars and probably books I would still rate five stars to this day. Then we have, of course, Beach Read by Emily Henry, Happy Place by Emily Henry. Those are my two favorite Emily Henry books and Happy Place was my favorite read of this year. Then I have the third book in a Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, As Good as Dead. That book will make you love it the series or hate the series. The first book was great for me. The second book was terrible. The third book made the series so worth it. So I definitely recommend that series. Another book I love is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. The Change by Kirsten Miller. So good. I've never read a book like that before. I love Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez, Magnolia Parks, Daisy Hates. Love that whole series. And then obviously, I mean, I loved Harry Potter growing up, Twilight all of that. Fourth Wing, I was obsessed with that world. I really like My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and LJ Shen. Those are some of my favorites right there. Next question is what are some challenges you foresee happening with your booktube channel? And honestly, although I said I am persistent earlier and I've been posting all these years without much reward, I do feel discouraged sometimes when I will literally spend an hour filming a video three hours editing it, another 30 minutes with a description, the tag, stuff like that, and then it will get 11 views. That is disheartening. <laughs> I love it as a hobby and I would love to turn it into a side hustle as well. So I just need to stay consistent. It's hard to come up with engaging content as well. I find myself jumping on the latest trends and I really want to think outside of the box and post original content. Next question is, when did you start reading? 
Oh my goodness. Oh, here's Cooper, our foster dog. Say hi! He's getting adopted this week. But when did I start reading? As who knows that I was able to read. I was obsessed. I read all of the Junie B. Jones books. I remember, oh, excuse you, <laughs> he just burped. I remember being in fourth grade and doing the AR reading challenge and making sure I read the most books in my class. And I remember having to read a ton of books to get invited to the AR pajama pizza party. I remember having readathons at school. Like, am I crazy? Did y'all do this? We would wear our pajamas to school and just get to read all day. Those are my favorite days. And to this day, I still have readathons by myself. <laughs> in fifth grade, I remember at my elementary school, the librarian knew my name. And you're like, yeah, whatever. I graduated with 900 people. And so my elementary school was huge. It had fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And at the time, that was before you could go to private schools in my district or whatever. So we started off with way more than 900 kids in my class and one library and so i remember you had to take your student id check out your books and that was the only way they could associate the books you checked out but the librarian i walked up one day and she was like hey maddie how are you doing and i didn't even have to give her my card she just typed in my student id number because she knew it because i was always in there checking out books and i think that's a cute story to tell because i was obsessed with reading from a young age. And then in middle school, I remember I would still check out books from the library and that was when I read The Fault in Our Stars. And then freshman year of high school, in my classes, we read like Looking for Alaska randomly and a bunch of other books. And I always enjoyed reading from my classes. And then when I got to college, I don't think I was reading much my freshman year, but my sophomore through senior year is when I got into my major classes where they were specialized to my major and I was a communications major and I had a ton of reading and I had to write a ton of papers in all of my classes, but I loved doing that. Don't get me wrong, I loved it. I remember my classical rhetoric class is was so challenging and I remember reading so many philosophers works and a ton of classics in that class and having to write papers and interpret it in our own way and compare it to modern day and I loved that. I absolutely loved that. And so I was still reading, not for fun, but for class. And then senior year, when I had more time to myself, I would read some popular books at the time, but I really didn't get back into reading until 2020 or 2021 when my job was stressing me out, like I said. I would read to turn my mind off and since then I've consistently been reading and tracking my reading. Sorry that was a long answer but it's the truth. I've had ups and downs with my reading over the years but I've always gone back to it and always realized why I love reading in the first place. I love getting attached to fictional characters like it's my job. Where do you read? Great question. I'm currently in my guest room and that is where I like to do most of my reading whether it's in my reading chair or on the bed. I honestly just love to lay on my side and read, especially since I got my Kindle. I will also read out on the couch with a blanket and just cozy up. I will read when we travel, I'll read in the car. If I don't get too car sick, I'll listen to audiobooks while I do dishes, make dinner, stuff like that. I'm constantly <laughs> consuming content, no matter what it is. What are some genres that you like to read? Honestly, I like reading everything. Romance is definitely my favorite. I fell in love with fantasy again recently. I loved Harry Potter growing up, but Akatar got me back into fantasy. So did Fourth Wing. I'm a sucker for a young adult book as well. Oh, I love thrillers. Frida McFadden got me into thrillers. And last, what does your book collection look like? So come along, I will show you guys. So here is my reading corner and the bookshelf we have in this house. It actually came built into the wall. Up top, we've got some series I'm obsessed with. The next shelf is mostly romance books or young adult. I think I have a few thrillers, maybe one memoir in there. And then down here, I've got the Heartstopper collection over here, Normal People on Display, of course, because it is one of my favorites and I love the show. We've got a lot of my book of the months. So I have read most of these. And then some of these are part of my TBR as well as the bottom shelf. Well, besides Happy Place, but I just displayed it. There are some more books that are on my TBR. Some of these are Sam's, but most of them are mine. Then over here, I kind of ran out of space, but I still wanted to display my books. And I feel like they look kind of cute over here. We've got 
some books that are on my TBR over here. Some of Sam's books are on the bottom right there. I've got some blind dates with a book right there that I still want to open and a little plant and a mirror. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video and I hope you got to know a little bit more about me and why I love reading. If you liked this video and you want to see more book content, definitely subscribe down below. I would so appreciate it and I hope you guys will stick around and watch more of my book videos. See ya!